In the late 90s, the Backstreet Boys and NSYNC were dominating airways and MTV. What stood out to them was their good looks, marketing, promotion, etc., and etc. They were basically tier 1 of the late 90s boy bands. Biggest leader of tier 2, in my opinion, is the subject of today's video. 98 Degrees were a boy band from that same era and while they did have the good looks, they didn't have the same marketing, promo, etc. and etc. like NSYNC or Backstreet. Because of this, they often get lost in the shuffle. Today we're going to take a look at 98 Degrees journey, so without further ado, this is what happened to 98 Degrees. Bathtub. Before we begin, if you want to see music bios or more good videos like this, hit the subscribe button. Also, I've started a Patreon account. On here you get more copyrighted material and they'll be uploaded 48 hours prior to YouTube. If you want to support or visit, link is in the description. And without further ado, on to our feature presentation. Nick Lachey was born on November 9, 1973 in Harlan, Kentucky, but Kentucky would be the settling point for the Lachey family as they would move to Cincinnati sometime after his brother Drew Lachey's birth. He attended the School for Creative and Performing Arts in Cincinnati and after this attended the University of Miami of Ohio where he studied sports medicine. He would get a job at the King Island Amusement Park and would meet friend Justin Jeffrey as they were part of a quartet that sings around the park. Meanwhile, Jeff Timmons attended Kent State and studied psychology. It was said that he dreamed about playing in the NFL, but after singing at a school event, people realized he had a gift, so the next day, he dropped out and moved to LA. He will meet a man named Jeff Lipman, and the two formed a group. But after several members quit, he asked Timmons if he could call Lachey as a permanent replacement. He agreed on the condition his friend Justin joins as well. They underwent several name changes, but settled with 98 degrees, as described their body temperature and their music being hot. But once in LA, getting a record deal wasn't easy. The members took several odd jobs like landscaping, food delivery, and security work, but they caught their first break when they sang at a radio broadcast that was hosting a Boys to Men concert. They will be discovered by music manager Paris Dijon. Managing Montel Jordan at the time, he arranged 98 to open for Montel on his tour. They accepted and hired him to manage them as well. They were still shopping their demo at this time and a record company came calling called Motown. But just as the group was going to sign on the dotted line, Jeff Lippman left the group as his Christian beliefs wouldn't mesh in the harsh music industry. He would later form a Christian boy band named True Vibe. The group needed to find a replacement and luckily this was easy to find. Nick recruited his younger brother Drew to replace him. Drew was a medic at the United States Army in New York City. Drew accepted and joined the group and 98 was signed to Motown. And it should also be noted that when 98 signed with Motown, bubblegum groups like the Spice Girls and the Backstreet Boys were emerging. But 98 wanted to do R&B instead of the mainstream sound. Also unlike groups mentioned, the group wrote most of their own material. In July 1997, 98 released their self-titled debut album. Contributing with their debut was Mario Winans, Montel Jordan, and Kenny Green from Intro. The album was headlined by the single The Invisible Man, and that song peaked at number 12 on the Hot 100. The song also reached the top 10 in various countries. I wish you look at me that way. But their follow up single, Was It Something I Didn't Say, felt the chart. As for the album, it reached number 145 on the Billboard 200. But not to worry, they promoted Invisible Man by opening for Janet Jackson's Velvet Rope Tour, and they toured solo in Asia as Invisible Man became a huge hit in that continent. The next year, they teamed up with Stevie Wonder on the song True to Your Heart for the Mulan soundtrack. This leads us to their next album, 98 Degrees and Rising, released on October 1998. The lead single was Because of You, and because of this was more of a pop song than an R&B song, it was able to cross over and it came to group's first top 10 hit, peaking at number 3 on the Hot 100. That followed with The Hardest Thing, and like Because of You, it too reached the top 10 on the Hot 100. Yeah. 
Their third single was a ballad called I Do Cherish You and in the video featured a cameo from Saved by the Bell star Dustin Diamond. Anyway, this song peaked at number 13 on the Hot 100. 98 Degrees and Rising fared better than their debut going quadruple platinum. 98 then saw an opportunity to record a song with Mariah Carey and Joe called Thank God I Found You. The song was intended to be just a Mariah Carey and Joe duet, but the songwriters Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis wanted male harmonies for the song and recruited 98 for the job. Glad they did because Thank God I Found You went to number one on the Hot 100. The song also saw the group nominated for a Grammy for Best Pop Collaboration with Vocals. For Nick, he would venture outside of 98 for the first time when he teamed up with Jessica Simpson on the song Where You Are, and after she was the opening act on their tour, their relationship began. As the millennium turned, they started to have label issues with Motown. Like with Boys to Men, Motown was in transition as it got bought out by Universal, and 98 got caught in the transition and joined Universal. And this will lead them to their third album called Revelation, released in September 2000. It was headlined by the song Just Give Me One Night Una Noche. The song set the record for the highest debut on the Hot 100 for a boy band as it debuted at number 2. Give me just one night, una noche. The next song was My Everything and this song featured a rare lead for Drew Lachey. But the song only managed a top 40 peak on the Hot 100 as Revelation went double platinum. You are my everything, in September 2001, they shared the stage with Usher and the late Luther Vandross as they paid tribute to Michael Jackson at his 30th anniversary special performing Man in the Mirror. As the boy band era was fading out, 98 decided to go on hiatus to focus on solo endeavors in 2003. Justin Jeffrey decided to make a run for mayor in Cincinnati. Jeff Timmons embarked on a solo career. In 2004, he released Whispers That Way. In 2007, he was part of the reality show Mission Man Band, where he formed Sure Shot, which consisted of Brian Abrams from Color Me Bad, Rich Cronin from LFO, and Chris Kirkpatrick from NSYNC. Drew Lachey took part of the second season on Dancing with the Stars and won. He was also part of Rent on Broadway. In 2019, Drew competed and failed on American Ninja Warrior. Now the rest of this video is majority Nick Lachey. Nick has been on again, off again with Jessica Simpson until 2002 when they married. Their relationship was showcased on the MTV reality show Newlyweds, Nick and Jessica. In 2003, he released his first solo album, Soul O, and that album featured the song This I Swear and now it's used for the theme song for their reality show. But like most celebrity marriages, this didn't last. After the show ended in 2005, the couple separated and eventually divorced in 2006. And this segued us into his second solo album, What's Left of Me. The song made references of his previous relationship, and thanks to that, the song peaked at number 6 on the Hot 100 as the album went gold. In the music video, it featured Vanessa Manilio, who spent her early career as the host of TRL. The two fell in love as they shared November 9th as their birthday. The couple briefly broke up, but reconciled, and in 2011, Vanessa Manilio became Vanessa Lachey as their wedding was filmed on TLC. The couple shared three children and even viewed as a power couple in Hollywood. Nick has been getting involved in hosting. In 2009, he hosted the game show Sing Off. In 2020, he and his wife became the host of Love is Blind. The couple both competed on Dancing with the Stars season 25 with Vanessa finishing 7th and Nick finishing 5th. Nick competed and won on The Masked Singer season 5 as Piglet. And fun fact, he was a last minute addition as he agreed to do the show 4 days prior to the first episode filming. He made many 98 degree references, doing a song with Stevie Wonder and referencing his show Love is Blind. In 2012, 98 reunited on The Today Show. It was supposed to be a one-time performance, but it turned into a full-fledged reunion. The next year, they went on tour with fellow boy bands New Kids on the Block and Boys to Men. That same year, they released their first album in a decade called 2.0. In 2018, the group performed on the Miss USA. In 2023, the group celebrated 25 years since 98 Degrees and Rising. 
and jokingly said that their fire was lost thanks to another boy band reuniting at the VMAs to promote their animated movie release later that year. They also announced a new single and album set to release in 2024. And that's pretty much what 98's been up to. 98 often gets lost in the shuffle when talking about the greatest boy bands of all time, but still garner respect from their peers and fans. And that concludes what happened to 98 Degrees. Tell me what you think in the comments below. Please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.